Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to learn how to play Gunfighter's Ball by Knuckle Duster Miniatures. Let's get going. So I've spent many years trying to find a proper set of rules for playing cowboy or Wild West wargaming at conventions specifically. Uh, rules that require only a few figures per player, not based upon large posses, but a player playing one or two characters at most, uh, with rules that are easy to pick up and quick to learn and can be played fast and quickly at a convention type experience. In my opinion, Wild West games are an excellent choice for games, pickup games or games at conventions. A rather small requirement for buildings and terrain makes it all very doable to set up in a very quick time. The one thing I've never had much luck on is finding a set of rules that met all the needs that I had in a set of, uh, set of miniature rules. That is until I found Gunfighter's Ball by Knuckle Duster Miniatures. Now they say right on their webpage that they spent 10 years in research, mostly playing in convention sort of environments. And they have in the end created an excellent, fast-paced, Wild West Miniatures game uh, dedicated to playing, as I say, just a few figures per, per side. In fact, the writer of the game recently told me that he found uh, too many people trying to play it in very large numbers. This game works best with no more than maybe six players playing just one or two figures on a side. And when we get down to playing the rules, you'll start to see why that is. So here I have uh, the criminal side of my table set up. And let me just show you how this game works, a basic outline. Um, this here is the California Kid. You'll see down above that little red dot, I wrote that there so it's more legible, uh, is a number two. That has to do with how many actions he's going to have in a turn. Up here there's a number of rounds in his pistol. He's got a one pistol with a full set of rounds, no backup rounds. He has a, a Derringer hidden in his boot, probably. Just above him here is a card. That is his ace in the hole. But it's also a reminder of what card he activates or what number he activates on. This game will use a normal uh, deck of playing cards. There is a uh, custom made one for the game made available. However, any card deck will work. In fact, what I'm using here is a uh, reproduction card deck. So what this three means is that he will activate on whenever a three is pulled. The number on the bottom of the card, the one I told you that sets his activations, that two, that means that he has two of those cards in the activation deck. That's the deck I just showed you a moment ago. These here are poker chips. These are used to determine and keep track of hit points. Uh, there are six white ones and three red ones. Uh, once one gets into the red, you have a mortal wound. These chips are simply expended one at a time as you take hits, as you cash in your chips, as it were. Now, these particular chips are polymer clay professional chips. These are the same chips that are available for the game if you order chips through Knuckle Duster, although any poker chip will certainly work for this game. These cards on the bottom are from the Pistolero deck. Now this is an option in the game. It's not required to play. It doesn't come with the basic set, but it gives various strengths and weaknesses to the various characters. And it uses a, a cool mechanism in which you try to, you pull cards and you try to take the cards that are good for yourself and force your opponent to take negative cards. Uh, what I did in this case, it saves some time because it, I'm going to be showing you just a solo game, is I went ahead and picked a good and a negative card for each player. Though I did randomly choose them, so they won't. A number of them have horse uh, abilities, and we won't be using horses in this basic game. But it gives you some of the ideas. Just an example of what I mean is this card here. Uh, this is um, a Lucky Son of a Gun. Uh, you are luckier than a dog with two bones. Uh, this card allows you to pass hard tasks uh, on an easier roll than would normally be required. Again, it probably won't be a part of this game, but more for a game in which you had certain goals and uh, objectives you had to achieve. As long as I'm looking at this team, I might as well introduce some of the players. This is California Jake. This is McGuff, armed with a rifle. And here, with his two pistols, is Lightning Jake, ready to give the good guys a hard time. Over here, fighting for the Law Dogs, we have Eric Lonely Hayes, armed with a shotgun. Here is Sheriff John. And this is Lefty. Yeah, I realize he's drawing with his right hand, 
Uh, the lefty was one of those cards I just mentioned, and I don't have any figures that have a gun in their left hand, but not in their right. I guess I could have given him one of the two gun guys. All right, now let's see how this game plays. So the game calls to be played on a 3x3 table. Uh, for today's game, I'm actually playing on a 4x4 table, just because it was convenient. There are a number of scenarios in the book, as well as additional rules for creating scenarios. We're just going to do a simple Hollywood sort of stand-up with two adversarial groups meeting in the street. So here are my good guys, the sheriff and his posse, walking down the street. Long, long, wild west street to the bad guys there on the other side. So the first card drawn from our action deck is a two of clubs. So with the two, this activates McGuff. McGuff is the man armed with a rifle. He also, his negative card is he has a wooden leg, which gives him a negative two inch modifier to any movement on foot. His choices, he gets two actions per turn, and his actions can be to move, and there's different rates of speed for whether you're standing or walking. Uh, if you are moving and firing, you have to use your first turn to move and your second action to fire. Uh, you can mount or dismount horses in action. Aiming is an action you can take. Uh, you can fire. With most weapons, that means firing up to three shots or just one shot for a cold shot. That's a shot where you're determining your location. Uh, you can load your gun, three bullets or shells per action. All the usual sort of actions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first see if our man can move or how far he'll move. We've rolled a three. That's not particularly good since he has that wooden leg and has a negative two inch move. Um, he's going to move for one inch over here towards the cover. Now in this particular case, it makes sense to take a second action, I think. Uh, another section of movement since he's still at a pretty advanced range from one another. So we'll roll for no action. Five inches, this is a little bit better. Three inches, that means he can come here and get himself some cover. Um, get ready to get into the action the next turn. He's armed with a rifle, so that'll be useful for him. And three is the California Kid. The California Kid is a hired gun. He's gonna also take an action. I think he's gonna just take both actions to move on. Since again, you're gonna find that the pistol range in this game is pretty low. So we'll go ahead and, ooh, but he gets eight inches on that first move, not bad. Maybe I won't. No, we'll keep moving. So the first move takes him there. And the second move. Takes him into the... Over here by the saloon. So this time we have a queen. That activates Lefty, uh, who's oddly enough standing here on the right. Lefty's gonna, gonna also move eight inches again. And he's going to get here. That's still a little far, and there's a bunch of things in the way. I think he's going to move again. Unfortunately, he only gets two. He'll get up here into the porch, giving him a little bit of cover. Not a lot, but a little. This time we have a king. That activates Sheriff John. Sheriff John is going to also move forward. Ew, he gets a ten. He's going to come over this way towards the printing office. Again, still a lot of things in the way. Except for the guy in the middle of the road. Still, we're at a pretty long range right now. Not sure we want to fire quite yet. Not with pictures. So Eric Lonely Hayes called that because he's a misogynist. He uh, doesn't like women. That shouldn't be a problem in this particular game as there's no women opposed. Uh, he activates on a jack, which is what we just pulled. So he's going to also move. He gets a nine. Going to back up his, his buddy over here. 
He's armed with a shotgun. I think I'm still going to wait to get a little closer. Maybe we'll move again with him. Gets him almost up to the tavern. So we rolled another jack, or pulled another jack. That again is uh, Lonely Hayes. Lonely Hayes is going to move forward a little bit more. And maybe this time we'll start getting close enough for a shot. There it is. Might as well move again. Oh, that's going to help next turn though. He's going to come all the way over here to the Trailblazer Hotel. That's an example of how that activation system works. We're still going through that first turn, but he's managed to get his second card already before uh, one of the opponents is even activated. And the king allows Sheriff John to activate. We're getting, getting a little closer. And roll an eight. He's going to come alongside Hayes here. Hayes is going to have an action soon. Sheriff John is now within eight inches of his opponent. So Sheriff John decides to take a shot, firing from here over at California J, just here, firing uh, across the porch and into him. Now, this is what that card that I was talking about earlier that's up above the um, characters. I mentioned that there was that card put aside, the ace in the whole card, and it helps remind you which card you activate on, but it also has another role to play and that is this. It allows you to take a quick draw. This is a way to allow the inactive character to respond and alter a circumstance so we can't simply be taken advantage of because of the mechanics of a game with an I go, you go sort of arrangement. Instead, it allows him to act out of turn by borrowing a future activation. So California Jake has done that. The card that's above his character card has been flipped over to show that he's using his ace in the whole card and now what we're going to do is go to a quick draw. Quick draws are determined by rolling a d6 and adding your action number and trying to outroll your opponent. Uh, some cards will give various advantages to this roll. Uh, our hired gun, California Jake, gets a plus one because he is a hired gun. So we're going to roll first for Sheriff John. Sheriff John is a, um, has a three action points, so he gets a plus three to the roll. That's seven. California Jake is only a two, but because of the uh, additional hired gun rule, he uh, has a plus three. And he gets eight, so he will get to fire first. Earlier I mentioned that most of the time when you're firing guns, particularly the revolvers, that they allow you to shoot up to three shots at a turn. One of the other advantages of using quick draw, besides allowing you to act out of your activation, uh, also reduces that. Now, each player only gets to roll for one shot. So at this range, which counts as short range with the pistols being under nine inches there at eight inches apart, this would normally be a 60% chance to hit. Because it's a quick draw roll, it is automatically reduced by half. That brings it down to 30 points. Uh, California Jake, though, being a hired gun, also has a plus 10, so he's back up to 40% chance to hit with his shot, and he rolls a 35. That is a successful hit on our hero. One of the options I'm using in this particular game is what's called the black deck. This is a random way of determining what the effect of a shot is. These are again an option for the game. I like the flavor they add, but the wound chart right in the rules does basically the same thing with a die roll. Uh, so again, it's something you can decide to, to do or not do, but you don't have to spend the money on it. This particular result, oh, not good for, for our hero. I mentioned earlier that the chips act as hit points, but that's really for just blood damage or bleeding out. Uh, but certain results can alter that entirely, uh, such as this result. Fatal chest wound, farewell, cruel world, which causes our poor Sheriff John to cash in all of his chips he doesn't even get his response. Normally in that quick draw, he would now be able to fire. But the, the shooting was too effective, and he was dropped. So an ace gives an activation to the bad guys later, his first activation, allowing him to make some response. Uh, he doesn't really have a good target lined up, and he's still at some kind of distance. Um, I think I'm going to move him first. He moves for seven inches, goes and takes cover, there and waits 
I'm going to go ahead and just sit there, I think, and you not use a second action. So queen activates lefty. Lefty's going to move. Lefty is not doing particularly well here. Um, he only moves an inch. Apparently he's a little hesitant at the shooting. He's going to go ahead and move it two inches this time. Um, Lefty is not so sure he wants to get into this fight. Another ace gives a second activation to McGuff, hiding behind the barricades there. Uh, he should have moved last time, I think, and he is going to move now. There we go. Six inches. Is that going to give him a line of sight? It's going to put him behind this cactus. And he's going to... He's going to take a shot at Lonely Haze. Now, Lonely Haze doesn't have the option of doing the Quick Draw. Uh, I should mention that Quick Draw, unlike what the name would imply, doesn't mean that you're pulling the gun out of your holster. Uh, having his shotgun in his hand is certainly viable, and it is able to be able to do it with a shotgun or a rifle, not just with handguns. But you do need to be within nine inches. So he isn't eligible to do it. In this case, I don't think I want him to anyway. I think that shotgun is going to be necessary in a turn. Uh, so instead, we're going to have McGuff just fire. Now, McGuff, I think I'm only going to... I'm going to go ahead and shoot two rounds. McGuff is going to go around and shoot two rounds. He's going to lose. They're going to deduct rounds as he goes. The, uh, the first round... The distance is... What was it? 12, oh, just over. Over 13. This counts as a medium range shot. That's 44 to hit. He has moved. That's a primary modifier. Now, primary modifiers, which is shooting when moving during the turn, uh, shooting if you're mortally wounded, or shooting on a quick draw, all of those half your score, but they can all only be applied once. Once one of those primary modifiers is applied, that is the maximum that can happen. So his 45 is going to drop to 23, but uh, it won't get, it won't drop from uh, if he was suffering from these other things, which he's not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say he's in bad, uh, bad cover. That's going to drop this down to three. That's not, not really going to be very successful. Good thing I only took one. This is why I only took one shot in what I was talking about earlier about the ranges, particularly with the pistols. You got to be pretty close. I'm giving him bad cover because he is on that porch and has uh, the framework of the porch that he's backed up again. The, um, I'll go ahead and roll for that shot. Needing basically a three. 56. So unsuccessful. So I have to mark off a shot and I haven't hit my target. McGuff may have missed his target last time, but he got the next activation. Another ace came up. That's him. So he can go ahead and act again. I'm going to go ahead this time and shoot first for at least uh, I think we'll fire for two rounds this time we'll shoot for two rounds so that first round now doesn't have that first modifier uh, we're still he hasn't moved so we're still looking at a oh it's 44 not 45 uh, we're still looking at a 44 to hit uh, he hasn't moved so it doesn't drop the uh, opponent is still in um, in the bad cover so that drops it to 34 so we roll for the first shot 34 25. That's a hit. I pull up my black deck card. Bullet ricochets off your thick skull, knocking you to the ground. So, Lonely Haze is dropped to the ground. He only takes, the bottom of the card has a number and a disc. Uh, in this case, it is a one. So he takes one chip of damage, and he's now down from nine to eight damage. Uh, but he's also dropped. That's going to take him an action to get up. And that was the first shot. He called that he was firing two shots. So for the second shot, uh, we needed a, a 30, 34 for that. Each shot, when you're repeatedly firing like that, reduces by 10. So the first shot, he needed a 34. This one, he's going to need a 24. Oh, except that the target is now also prone. So he's going to need a 14. Uh, 52 does not do it, but he has used two more rounds. So 
So I just noticed that I've been calling the leader of the bad guys McGuff, and McGuff is actually the man carrying the rifle. Lightning Jake is the leader. That was Lightning Jake who just fired those shots and managed to drop uh, Lonely. On the other hand, McGuff is here with the rifle, lining up, waiting to take a shot. Do I want to shoot the guy on the ground, or do I want to shoot... Do I have a line of sight on? I think those horses are actually blocking line of sight by the horses. I mean, he's, uh, he's here, and uh, way, way over here we have Lefty. But uh, Lefty is the only man standing on the uh, lawman side, though um, Lonely Hayes is only down. He's not... And slightly wounded, he is not um, not out of the action in any way. I could shoot at him with a negative prone, and that's what he's got really the better line of sight on. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, it is 16 inches, but it is with a rifle. Technically, this is a hunting rifle. Uh, at this range, he is a, he's with 50% to hit with this weapon, and he's going to get a plus one to damage with it. It should have been a repeating rifle, but uh, the card I've given was a hunting rifle. Um, so he's shooting at 50. He has not moved. I'm going to go ahead and fire. He's got two actions. So the first action will be to, um, to aim. Uh, this gun only has a rate of fire of one. Uh, I could have taken two firing actions, but instead I'm going to aim because my target is prone. Starts as 50 to hit. I have not moved. Target is, uh, I would argue it doesn't really have any cover now, but he is prone, so that's going to bring this down to 40. The aiming, though, undoes that and puts us right back up to 50. So we're going to roll a 50 from McGruff, firing at poor Lonely Hayes, laying there on the ground, and he gets, rolls a 13, that is a hit. We check the black deck for its effect. Oh, not good for the lawman. Fatal neck wound, all his chips are gone. That is, um, that is another character down. I think you're seeing also why, part of why the game doesn't last long in general. This is a quick moving game. Uh, we've already, in just a few turns, well, not even completed a first turn, we already have two of the good guy's characters out of the game permanently. So we just pulled the three of hearts. Now, threes are California Kid. Remember, though, that earlier he played his ace in the hole card. So he flipped his ace in the hole card over to show that he had taken that. And now that his card has come up for the first time since then, he loses his activation and we turn his card back right side up. So that ends the first turn. Now, I do have a number of um, bystanders out on the table. If we were playing a full on game, I would now activate those bystanders, see what their uh, reactions might be to the game so far to these responses. Uh, to the uh, gunfighting around them. The, uh, for instance, there's two, um, the two ladies sitting there on the uh, balcony of the saloon. I imagine that they might be shooting for cover, uh, looking to get out of harm's way or something, since there's been a lot of shooting right underneath them there. But uh, I'm not going to bother with that in this particular game. As I said, I'm really just trying to show you the basic mechanics of the game. So we got another two. That activates McGuff. So we roll a d10 for his movement. Since he's lost his target, he only gets an inch. I'm going to go ahead and move twice. <laughs> Another inch. Not really good McGuff. Um, that gets him behind these barrels, at least. So he's still in cover if something should happen. So that's Lightning Jake, who activates on two. He uh, has to move, also having lost his target. Uh, he's going to try to get over here to get to... Uh, the last remaining good guy, Lefty. Um, it was unfortunately for poor Jake, right around the corner there. There's nothing really in the game like uh, Overwatch or anything, which is something I'd really like to do right now. Uh, if I move, I'm not going to be able to shoot again. He's sort of in cover there. We're going to leave him where he is. That was the right call because the next activation he came up was again lightning. Uh, so he can actually now, oops, where's my, so he can move forward those last few inches he needed to move, six inches, get up here, and he can fire at lefty. 
Now they are well within nine inches. They are presently at three inches. So in this case, Lefty is really gonna want to do his quick draw. Lefty's gonna quick draw. Lightning, Lightning Jake is gonna quick draw. However, Lightning Jake, as you may imagine by that name, gets a plus one. He is already as an activation two. He gets a plus three because of his, uh, his uh, Pistolero card. So he rolls, oh, he's got a nine. Uh, there's no way that Lefty is gonna be able to pass that. He's only got his plus two. And sure enough, he gets four. So the first shot, now remember this uh, drops it only to one. So he doesn't get to fire the multiple shots like he would have been able to had that quick draw not been done. Still, uh, they are at uh, three inches. They're still, they're in short range. They're still not up close, which requires being with an inch. Uh, so this would be a 60 because it's a, a quick draw that drops down to 30. Uh, there's no cover. 26, that's a hit. So we pull our black deck card and we get right buttocks hit and bleeding. Reduced to half movement for the remainder of the game, and he loses a D3 of hit points. Some of you may have noticed when I began the game that there was what looked like a six-sided die, a yellow die, in the uh, foreground when I showed the bad guys. That is, in fact, an actual D3, which is, comes with the game. I get three, so Lefty loses three of his white chips, and he is wounded. However, not significantly enough to stop his return fire. Remember, this was a quick draw. So he gets to still return his fire. Uh, however, as, because it's a quick draw, it drops to 30. He is now wounded. Well, he's not mortally wounded, so that doesn't matter anyway. Uh, still no cover. That's it. So he has a 30% chance of returning that fire. And he gets a 19. That is a success. His black card reads, Bullet knocks your full hat off. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, no effect whatsoever to um, Lightning Jake. Well, what are the odds of that? Another ace. Lightning Jake is proving true to his name and he's going to get another shot. Now, this time, Lightning Jake is uh, still standing. He is not moving. Uh, he has fired all but two of the rounds in that gun. He's also, however, a two-fisted pistolero. So he's going to go ahead and fire three uh, three shots out of his bad hand, his left hand. So he's going to fire with his left hand. That gives a negative 10 to the roll. Uh, they are still at short range. So the first round would normally be a 60. That's going to bring it down to 50. Now, you'll notice Lefty can't do that fire in the hole again. He can't do the quick shot. He's got his card upside down, so he can't resist this one. Uh, this may be the end of Lefty. Uh, that first shot misses. That was a 68. He needed a uh, 50. The next shot goes down by 10. So now he needs a 40. And that is 0-1. And that is a hit. Black deck. Bullet ricochets off the flask in your left breast pocket. Spend the remainder of the turn figuring out if you're hit. You're disappointed to realize that the wetness you feel is good whiskey and not blood. Actually, no hits. Boy, has it become a lucky day for left. So Lefty's queen card came up, so I've been able to turn his um, ace in the hole back up and reactivate it, but he lost that activation. And the next card to come up is a two, and that's McGuff, armed with that rifle. And uh, McGuff has got a good aim, right? To, except for uh, McGuff is right here against these barrels and shooting way over here at um, Lefty. Lefty's got some cover, but it's not good cover. It's going to be bad. Um, we're looking at a range. Twenty-one inches. That uh, with that hunting rifle, that's um, that's going to be medium. That's a fifty to hit. We're going to go ahead and use the aim, which is going to bring it up to sixty to hit. Um, so he needs to roll. A, so and then the cover is going to bring that back down to fifty. Huh, Sixty-three. Uh, the uh, the cover actually saves him. The hit doesn't doesn't hit. So again. This card, uh, the three comes up, California Kid. California Kid is only inches away from Lefty. So he's going to go ahead and shoot. But having called that, because they're nine inches and because he just managed to get his card back, Lefty can do 
is ace in the hole again. Still, it's risky because there's a plus three for um, the California Kid, but he only gets six. This is doable this time. Gets six, oh, but it's only four for poor lefty. That shot's gonna be fired first by uh, California Jake. He, um, the good thing again is it drops from the three shots to only one, and it reduces that 60 to half, so it's at 30% now. 30% to hit. Ooh, but that is a hit at 07. Pull the black deck card. Shot in the right knee, blinding pain, drops you to the ground. So Lefty has fallen to the ground, he falls prone, he's reduced to crawling for the remainder of the game, and he takes 1d3 plus 3 chips. So we roll our d3. Ooh, we got a 3, that's 6 points of chips. Not good. 5, 6, that takes us into the red. Our hero is now fatally wounded. What that means, it doesn't mean the game's over for him net yet, but it does mean that this is his last game. It also doesn't stop his chance to fire back, though he's going to be... Um, remember the uh, fire modifiers, the primaries only count uh, uh, once, uh, so um, he's already at half for quick drawing. The mortally wounded won't reduce it more, so he's going to return that fire. Again, it can only be the one shot. And he rolls a 16. That is a hit. He manages to hit the California Kid. He hits the California Kid. Fatal head wound. Beat the drum slowly. Play the fife slowly. That's all of the California Kid's hits. Well, at least there's some success for the good guys. I think I'm going to call this game here. There's not much reason to continue. The uh, legal guys pretty much have, um, have lost this fight. But maybe, uh, maybe Lefty can get out of here with his, his life, having taken out the leader, at least, of the bad guys. I hope you see from that demonstration that Gunfighter's Ball is a quick-paced, uh, excellent game. A lot of fun to be had, surprising endings, very, very bloody. That's one of the reasons why uh, the games can be pretty, pretty short. Uh, the card activation, that uh, is a nice way of keeping it random and not knowing what's coming next. It's also why I don't recommend it for multiple characters. In that example, I was playing three guys on each side all by myself. And that's more than I would usually, or I wouldn't do more. I would not do more than three on each side. Um, you can, you can. You could replace the cards with tokens the way they did in um, the rules with no name. Uh, the, uh, or you could change what cards uh, you use and, and how you activate and that score. Uh, they recommend in the book, in fact, writing the names of the characters or the players on the tops of the individual cards. I, I don't bother with that. The, uh, the game's a lot of fun. It's been very successful when I've run it at conventions, and I, I hope that you'll give it a try. Uh, remember, if you like this video, to go ahead and hit like. Uh, if you like, you can subscribe. There's a, our subscribe button right there. And we hope to see you again. Thanks for joining us here on Cry Havoc Wargaming.